Hello, riders! Warm welcome to this uh, Sunday evening live where I have some exciting news for you because uh, Ride Like a Viking is holding a webinar together with International Center of Anthrosology. And the webinar is on Wednesday. And we are going to talk about groundwork to establish connection with horses, which then are the fundamentals of riding without reins. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I am, of course, very honored to be invited by an international organization who focuses on the interaction between humans and animals and how both the animals and the humans can benefit from this interaction. And, you know, this is what Ride Like Viking is all about. And it's also, you know, what I'm all about because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for horses. And that's kind of a long story, but I can tell it now if you want to hear. Uh, because at the age of 17, I actually got a law enforcement that judged me to go to rehab. <laughs> I think that's only something you can do with people underneath the age of 18. Well, anyhow, I was forced to go on rehab because I had a drug addi addiction problem and also probably because I dropped out of high school. And I, of course, I didn't want to go to rehab. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But, you know, once I got there and after trying to run away a couple of times and, you know, be uh, a rebellion, <laughs> like I think um, you are um, almost, you know, obligated to do when you are forced to go to rehab, I, I settled down. And that's thanks to the horses who were on this rehab center. Because in my... Um, childhood i was uh, riding horses like from i was nine to i was about 14 i was riding show jumping actually <laughs> and it was very very exciting and i basically i lived in the stable i didn't have my own horse or anything but you know i was mucking stalls and i was taking care of several horses you know just hoping to get a ride and i also took riding lessons once a week with a fabulous instructor. Uh, he is uh, actually quite famous in Norway for his uh, show jumping skills. But then we moved from uh, that town to Oslo. And I think I probably lost my feet a bit and uh, probably also had, you know, a lot of energy that needed to be used for something. And then I used it to, you know, protesting and partying and uh, yeah, you know, it kindly got a bit out of hand. But anyhow, at the rehab center, which I was then forced to go to, the horses, they, you know, they grounded me again. They gave me this faith in myself and this, you know, kind of reason to do something with my life. And uh, that again led to me then getting a job in Iceland as horse trainer and then getting accepted at the Hula University College uh, for the further horse studying there, which again led to me getting accepted to the agricultural college and then eventually taking a master's degree in science. And, you know, if it hadn't been for the horses at that rehab center, that, you know, taught me so much about, I think, you know, taking responsibility and maybe also getting your kicks in kind of a more constructive way than partying and, you know, being destructive, that you can really get a kick out of seeing results with a horse you've trained or, you know, gallop really fast and, you know, go a bit outside your comfort zone and uh, you know take responsibility because once i got to iceland you know i got a stable with 10 horses and i was supposed to feed them every morning muck all their stalls and tame them 
And, you know, if I didn't step up for these horses, nobody else would. And I also think the, you know, the thought of 10 hungry horses waiting for you to feed them has a much more profound effect on, on me than maybe adults nagging me to get out of bed to go to school, kind of. Yeah, anyhow, this is a long story and I also wrote a blog about it. Uh, I think it's called From uh, High School Dropout to Master in Science or something like that. But I definitely, I owe my life to horses. And I, I, you know, I'm a living example that horses have the power to change people's lives. Yeah, congratulations and good luck. Yes, you can actually join on the webinar if you want to. It's on Wednesday at 9.30 Central European time. And I'm going to share the link to the webinar in the comments so that you can join. And the webinar costs uh, about $12 to join or 10 euros. But members of Ride Like Viking, they are going to get it for free because I'm going to post a code in the Ride Like a Viking members group that you can use to get free access to the webinar. And also, I think, to make this very, very valuable connection. Because um, uh, this International Center of Untruthology, they have, you know, horse owners are working for them, doing, you know, miracles for humans with their horses and they are getting paid for doing so so i think whatever you have a cat or a horse or uh maybe even a goat i don't know or definitely a dog that is suitable and you are suitable for helping others with your animals then you can actually you know do well by doing good so this is a huge opportunity to get uh, you know connections and uh, further develop um, you know skills that you might need or your horse might need to be suitable for doing this kind of work yes and i thought during the webinar uh, i'm going to talk about uh, a few different topics which i took some notes here and um, because we are going to then talk about the fundaments of the Groundwork that then develops the connection that makes it possible to ride without the reins. And I'm just very briefly going to, you know, give you some kind of hint of what I think these fundaments are, because those can be very, very different depending on what type of training philosophy you have. And to say a few words about the training philosophy, I think. It can actually be called pure negative reinforcement because uh, you've probably seen many things of what I've been writing and doing and such. It's like be able to do liberty training with your horse without depending on treats. So I'm definitely not in the positive reinforcement department when it comes to horse training. And I think that is a fundamental part of how horses can actually teach us to find our inner force and, you know, step it up and take full responsibility. Because, and I'm going to try to explain it. Uh, what I have found now during the years of holding clinics and having farm stay guests and running a membership group is that the number one thing that most horse owners you know, get into trouble with is actually sending their horse off of body language. And I think that's something in um, most people's kind of human nature that, you know, we are very polite and we would never ever dream of, you know, hitting our horse or hurting our horse or, you know, we want to be very soft and kind and we are often very close to the horse. And maybe petting them, maybe kissing them, and you know, things get a bit muddy and messy. But once you kind of step up and send your horse off and claim your own personal space, you know, without offending the horse, but you know, being very clear, that's kind of 
saying like, you know, this is my space. I am grounded and I know, you know, my energy and my body. And this is my space and you need to step out of my space. That's something very many people have a huge problem with. And I'm going to explain where the problem lies because I have videos explaining how to do this. I have videos explaining the most common pitfalls. And I think people think they are doing one thing, but they end up doing something else. And what they are doing that something else is a reflection of their inner energy and them never have having stepped into their own power and their own energy. Okay, I have horse here and I have Bob the horse trainer, <laughs> poor Bob. <laughs> And I'm going to try to tell, uh, show you the difference between a send off and, you know, regular lunging. So if this is the horse here and this is Bob, so he is now going to send his horse off. So he first, he kind of points and then he steps and then he swings towards the horse's shoulder and the horse is sent off. And then Bob continues behind the horse's drive line, walking in a small circle. This is very, very simple. You just point, step forwards, one step, two steps, and then you swing, horses off, follow behind the drive line. What, you know, 80% of people do, although they think they step forwards, is that here's Bob, here's the horse, Bob is going to send the horse off. Bob walks in a circle around the horse, ends up behind the drive line and asks the horse for forward by waving the whip behind the horse. And that's not Bob sending the horse out of his space. That's Bob walking to the right position and then putting the whip behind the horse and asking the horse to move forward. Those are two very, very different things. And what kind of baffles me is a bit is that most humans, they don't even realize they are stepping sideways or backwards or not going straight forwards. They're like, um, and then they end up behind the horse and they use the whip to ask for forward. Instead of using body language first, their energy and claiming their space and sending the horse out of their space. So that's one side of it that is totally going to transform your life once you get this. Because, you know, doing this physically and sending off a big horse is going to have effect on other parts of your life as well. You are going to take action and you're going to take responsibility and you find your own energy in a very, very specific way. But then there's the other side of the, you know, this can, you know, uh, go big take a bit overhand. So if the only thing we do with the horse is, you know, claiming our space and commanding them around with our body language and our energy, the horse might become a bit, um, or the horse will probably become very obedient, but also hold quite a bit of tension. So we both need to step up and claim our space and be able to send the horse off but we also need to be able to listen to the horse and, you know, notice their signs of worry and definitely wait for relaxation. Because if we only command them around, they are going to be very, very compliant, but not comfortable. And if we never step up and, you know, take our space and move the horse, they are going to be very comfortable, but not compliant. So we need both. And what I have found is that it's quite difficult to read horses, actually. But I made a list of worry signs in horses. And I think the most important thing to remember here is that horses can hold tension while standing still. So at the horse standing still doesn't mean the horse isn't holding tension. But let's see. A very big sign of worry is, of course, a stiff, high-held neck. Another sign of worry is that the horse is focusing on the environment and not on the trainer. But then there's a third sign of worry. 
And that's the horse focusing only on the trainer and not on the environment at all. Like if the horse has the eyes glued on you at all times and doesn't dare to look away, that horse is tense. Just as the horse that is putting the shoulder towards you and looking at the environment and not paying attention, that's also a tense horse because that horse is worried about the environment. The horse who is always looking at you, you have both eyes and both ears at all times, is worried about you. And um, you can also see worry in terms of these kind of worry strings that horses very often have on their cheeks. They look a bit like this. They have kind of strings here. That's from kind of holding their jaws together and holding tension in the jaws, something horses tend to do a lot. And then there's the nostrils of the horse. They can give a horse away immediately. And, you know, if the nostrils are kind of like this, the horse is probably over breathing and not breathing deeply. And if one nostril is bigger than the other, that horse is also holding tension or, you know, one nostril small and another big. Not a good sign. That's a sign of worry. And a horse staring, not daring to blink. It's a sign of worry. Also, horses, you know, taking their eyes together like this can be a sign of something uncomfortable. And, you know, of course, um, uh, twitching, like they're twitching their skin when we are moving. That's a sign of worry. Their back dropping is a sign of worry. The horse not crossing over behind when doing a turn is a sign of worry. You know, you can, we can find a big and small signs of worry. And of course, you know, the horse rearing up, bucking, bolting. Usually it's because the horse is worried, not because the horse is, uh, you know, being dominant or trying to fool us or, or whatever. And some people even say that, you know, yeah, I think I have the worst kind of horse because he can stand perfectly still when I'm mounting. But once my butt is in the saddle, he takes off bucking and bolting and, you know, he is uh, deliberately trying to trick me to think he's calm. Horses aren't deliberately trying to trick people to think they are calm. It's just we who aren't able to see the small signs of worry before they explode into something bigger. And that's why I have kind of not focused so much on signs of worry and how to spot them, but rather, you know, put in time in the training to get signs of relaxation, which then is the opposite of worry. So in the Ride Like Viking members, we spend quite a lot of time waiting for our horses to yawn, lick and chew, lower their necks, find an even speed, cross over behind, become soft in the body to our signals, etc. Because that's much easier to spot something that's actually happening, that's a sign of relaxation, a sign of release, than to try to interpret these small uh, signs of worry. But once you start seeing them, you are going to see them everywhere. <laughs> it's like... Um, you know, once I was blind, now I see. And uh, very often horses become worried in their facial expression when people are holding them or clinging on their faces in some kind of way. So I definitely see a whole lot of worry signs when people are kissing their horses. And the people kissing the horse is probably not noticing this because they are so enthusiastic about the kissing and showing love to their horse that uh, they don't want to notice that the horse doesn't actually like it. Because horses can be very polite. They can stand with their ears pointed. And then maybe what gives them away are either the worry strings, or that they are looking away, or that one nostril is bigger than the other. But that's something the person kissing the horse doesn't see, because they are so in love with the horse and want to show their love in a very grabby and a very human way. So definitely build the relationship with your horse at a distance where the horse can actually see you and where you can use body language to communicate with the horse. 
But it doesn't mean you need to kind of have the horse at two meters away from you at all times either. You know, I love finding their itchy spots and pet them. But I'm also aware of when I'm petting a horse or brushing a horse, I might not see signs of worry that might be there. So then I might do some groundwork and wait for a letdown and a sign of relaxation to, okay, then now I may be emptied out the worry that might have been building up while I was uh, grooming the horse and putting the saddle on, etc. So this is going to be very exciting. And uh, I think these um, two kind of ways or two kind of opposite, that's very important when training a horse that you both have a send off and personal space, but you also have the ability to spot worry and facilitate and wait for relaxation. Those are, you know, two opposite, but very important parts of being a full human. Because if we're always in our, you know, taking our space and commanding and stepping forwards energy, achieving stuff, and we don't ever listen to anything, we are not a full human. But if we're always in the receiving end and always need listening and, you know, not actually, you know, stepping forwards for ourselves, then we are also not a full human. So I think that's how horses can make us wholer as humans is but by developing these two parts of ourselves that I think we need to have to, you know, have a good life and achieve success uh, in our lives and have good relationships. So uh, I think that's my two cents on it. And then maybe someone else might say that the most important uh, part to establish contact with humans is um, being able to smell them and pet them and give them treats or whatever. But, you know, that's definitely not my, my take on this. Yes. Okay, let's see if there are any comments here and are anyone joining? How fabulous, says Kire. Very interesting in having a horse who needs to connect to me. You are looking forward to it. Yes. And um, horses can uh, definitely complete us as humans. And this is a lifelong journey. And I think for me, it's been a journey of, you know, doing like one thing and thinking that this is the answer to everything. Like when I started with the body language and communicating with horses through body language, I was totally obsessed by it. I had all horses on two meters distance and I pointed them left, I pointed them right, I got them to move their hind end over off my body language, off a distance. And you know, it was all about this. And then I started, um, you know, seeing that some of the horses became very compliant, but not very comfortable. And then I was all about the relaxation and getting letdowns and relaxation and relaxation. And uh, that was what I focused most on. Uh, but now I think we, we probably, we need both because when a horse is forward and relaxed at the same time, that's when they are going to use their bodies functionally because their mental state is in a good place. The horse wants to be where he or she is and they are relaxed and forward at the same time, which sounds very easy, but you know, in, in real life, you might have to switch a bit between getting forward and getting the horse a bit up and then getting relaxation and get the horse, you know, very relaxed again. And then you, the horse becomes lazy and dull and then you need forward again. And this goes kind of back and forth until you are in the middle and you might not stay in the middle for very, very long. Then the horse might tip over to either becoming a bit dull again or becoming a bit too forwards. But during the groundwork, you have created all the tools you need to then fix it. Since you have been waiting for the yawn and getting deep relaxation, it's very easy for you to then get an uh, anxious forward horse relaxed again or since you have been you know 
you have claimed your space and you can send your horse off and get forwards, it's very easy to then get a dull and um, very relaxed horse to become a bit more forward again. So I think that's how the groundwork that you have taught the horse and yourself makes it then easy to balance the horse to become relaxed and forward at the same time, which again makes the horse very easy to ride without reins. Because at least my program, it's not a technical thing to ride without reins. It's more like a mental thing. Like when the horse wants to be where he or she is and is relaxed and forward, can hold an even speed, follow the track or in the arena, isn't attracted by the gate, isn't attracted by other horses, isn't afraid of the spooky corner. You can just take the reins off and you, you ride forwards and it's not about controlling the horse, it's actually about teaching the horse self-control. And that's what makes it easy to do, you know, without treats and without teaching the horse very, very specific technical stuff. Yeah. So there you go. And um, I think in addition to the re relaxation and forward part of the training and the groundwork, it's very much about giving choices. And when I first started with the choices, I thought, you know, I always thought that, you know, the most important thing in horse training and when taming a horse is that everything goes right and that nothing goes wrong. So I was very particular about never ever making the wrong thing happening. But now I love it when things go wrong. You know, it's nothing better than when, you know, you have a total screw up because that's our chance to teach the horse the right thing. So by making the unwanted behavior more work than the wanted behavior, making that easier, the horse is then going to choose the wanted behavior. Like, uh, yeah, the best example is probably horse who wanting to be by the gate. If we mount, and the first thing we do is to make sure the horse doesn't go to the gate and try to prevent the horse from going to the gate, we end up having a problem because the gate is going to be even more interesting. So you might then every time we are riding towards the gate, we might have to hold the horse a bit back. And every time we are past the gate, we need to re ride a bit forwards because the horse is always thinking about the gate. But if we just drop the reins, ride forwards, end up by the gate, do our work there until the horse doesn't want to be by the gate. Then we relax the horse away from the gate. The gate kind of loses its magnetic power, which of course is going to, um, you know, make it difficult to ride without reins. And it's the same with the scary corner. If we're constantly trying to then push the horse into the scary corner, the horse is going to get confirmation that, you know, that corner is scary because every time I, I go there, the rider starts, you know, with the inside leg and outside rein and maybe even try to whip me into the corner. I don't want to go to the corner anymore. You know, that corner is scary. And the rider just confirmed it. But if you release the horse into the scary corner, every time the horse goes to the scary corner, you release and make the horse relax and be comfortable the horse is going to be magnetically attracted by the scary corner. So the only thing you have to do is ride the horse out of the corner again. So it's not rocket science, folks. It's very, very easy. <laughs> but somehow people think this is crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, it makes sense, especially to horses, because they want to be where they are comfortable. And, you know, very, very easy to make our ID, the horse's ID, if we just dare to let go and make and allow the wrong thing to happen and make the wrong thing more work than the right thing. It's the same with the grazing. We're always kind of trying to prevent the horse from grazing. We're going to make the grass very tempting. If we ride forwards into trot every time the horse grazes, you know, the grass isn't so tempting anymore. So I actually have an exercise about this on ridelikeviking.com slash grazing, where you can learn how to 
make your ID of not gracing the horse's ID so that you can ride on loose reins through the fields and through the grass. And it's the exact same method I use to you know, be able to ride without reins in an arena. Okay, so uh, if you uh, want to join the webinar, I would, of course, be uh, very delighted to see you there. And you will then get a very professional and full presentation of, you know, the different training methods and, you know, how to exact things you can do in the groundwork uh, that will enable you to connect with your horse and do liberty both on the ground and when riding and even without treats yes so i hope i see you on wednesday and for those of you who are already members of ride like viking you are going to get the webinar for free by getting a little code there that you can uh, insert when you sign up but if you are not a member of Ride Like Viking members, then uh, the webinar costs uh, 10 euros to attend or $12, which is not much because you both get um, uh, the inside tips on uh, easy exercises you can do with your horse to get started on this journey. And you will also get a network of, uh, you know, uh, like-minded uh, people and also um, this amazing foundation who actually makes it possible to have horses you know in a mindful and natural way and still you know make a living <laughs> so i am uh, very very amazed by what this uh, community has done the international center of Anthrosology, and I am. This is a gift for everyone who owns horses and you know don't want to compromise on horse welfare to make money. You can actually, through this program, you can make money by doing good both for your horse and for humans. So that's a total win win to me, and I'm looking so much forward to Wednesday. So look in the comments for the link to the webinar sign up and I will see you there. Okay, thank you so much for joining and bye for now.